call to order the meeting of the Central Vermont Career Center School Board. It is uh, Monday, May 13th, 6 p.m. Uh, we'll start with the reception of guests. And the suggestion was made that we go around and introduce everybody, because we have quite a large group here and on screen as well. Um, I'll start, I'm Lyman Castle. I am the uh, vice chair and uh, at-large member from the uh, Montpelier-Roxbury School Board. Terry Steele, I'm the at-large member for Washington Central Supervisory Union. I'm Jana Osman, I represent Twinfield. We don't have an at-large. Scott Lewins, I uh, represent the Montpelier Roxbury Board, and I'm a Montpelier resident. Michelle Lehman, I'm the business manager here at CBCCSD. Jody Emerson, superintendent director, then we'll go over there. Cindy McCurchy, I'm a cosmetology two teacher this year. Peter? Peter Anthony Guest, I'm on a tourist visa. I'm one of the two, <laughs> two Barry City reps in another life. <coughs> Carl Madison, the emergency services team instructor. Aaron Carter here in my capacity with Barry Educators Association. <coughs> Christina Courier, cosmetology program, first year this year. All right, we're gonna go Jim. <coughs> uh, Jim Alarch, I'm from uh, Harwood uh, Union District. Stephanie? Um, hi, I'm Stephanie Olson. I take the meeting minutes for the board. Guy. Hi, I'm Guy Isabel. I'm the large member from the BUSD Barry. Uh, Jason Monaco. Hi, I'm Jason Monaco. I'm the board member from Cabot. Jason Gingle. Hi, everybody. Jason Gingle, principal of Montpelier High School. Hopkins McGraw family. Uh, hi there, my name is Gilly Hopkins, and I am a Montpelier parent of a CECC student. Welcome. We won't worry about Orca. Pietra's <clears throat> here for later. I'm, and then there's an unknown. There's an unknown person? Ah. <laughs> hey, my name is Mike Bishop. I'm with Harwood Union. He's on um, our board. <laughs> yes, hi. I'm on the board. Um, <laughs> finally made it. All done vacations. Um, I'm not sure how to. Looks like there was an update to the app or something, so I'll have to figure out how to change my name. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, in your packets, we have the uh, the agreements and norms that we've all hopefully taken a look at over the course of the years. Um, on to public comments and correspondence. Should I read the? The purpose of this agenda item is to provide the general public an opportunity to address the board on any matter. Neither the board nor the administration will discuss the matter beyond determining any necessary next steps, such as referring the matter to the appropriate individual or group or offering clarification. Are there any public comments tonight? Yes. Please. Um, and I, I had meant to be there in person and uh, didn't quite land it. So I'm sorry not to have my camera on. I've just pulled over um, and am in my car. <laughs> um, so um, I am, as I mentioned, uh, so my name's Gilly Hopkins and I am the parent of a CBCC student in the Expo program. 
Um, and I just wanted to come and speak a little bit about our experience and provide just some general information and feedback about the admissions process and communication from CBCC for the board to be aware of. Um, so a little bit about my student. Uh, my student is newly 16 and um, they have only been a member of my family for a brief time. They, uh, I've, they've been a part of our life for a long time um, and my partner and I have only been parenting them for a brief time. Um, they are, um, we're new to navigating the CTE process uh, and our student is a student on an IEP and we are also new to navigating um, the special ed process as parents. That said, both my partner and I have spent a combined 30 years in social work um, with children with special needs via child welfare and school settings and um, almost exclusively in Vermont. And we've attended dozens of IEP meetings and interacted with multiple C CTEs in other parts of the state. Um, we have lots of connections to special educators and educational administrators personally and professionally, and we're really comfortable advocating in educational settings. Um, and we also are super privileged to have sort of a basic understanding of educational processes and confidence in, in reading of educational law and policy um, and asking questions when we have them. Um, so we recognize that in those ways, we're incredibly privileged. Um, so the two things that we wanted to talk about specifically today are our child's current placement at CVCC in the Expo program and um, sort of communication from CVC about manifestations of a child's disability and accommodations as outlined in their IEP. And then I also just wanted to briefly provide comments about the CVCC admissions process. So, um, oh, and I should probably check in. Can, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Great, great. Um, so, so to start, um, with the um, sort of our experience having a child on an IEP and a child who has a disability um, in the program, I think we just wanted the board to be aware that we have some concerns about um, CVCC's compliance with the ADA and IDEA. Um, I know that y'all are, are doing a first read of a policy today that, that probably aims to create a process um, a grievance process, probably largely because of our family, um, in regards to potential violations of um, Section 504. And um, so sort of in that vein, um, our child has been found eligible for special education. They have multiple disabilities and their primary disability is other health impairment for ADHD. The very first page of our child's IEP that details their disability and the impact that their disabilities have um, on their education reads, our students' access to learning is impacted by their health impairment. Their diagnosis of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder affects their ability to remain focused on instruction throughout the duration of a lesson. They demonstrate distracted behaviors, significant difficulty in attending, sustaining effort, and following directions. Um, that critical first section, substantive section of their IEP goes on to detail that our child has experienced multiple traumatic events throughout their childhood and that they struggle to maintain safety while using technology. So all of those things are very true for our child. Um, throughout their time at CBCC, they've exhibited lots of sort of challenging behaviors that are you know, almost word for word, what you would expect to see per their IEP. Um, and their classroom instructors have been great um, in responding to their IEP, in using a, a really strength space with our child. Um, but the communication and tone from the administration of C CBCC about our child's struggles, which again are almost directly linked to their disabilities as outlined in their IEP, have been very challenging. Um, they, I think overall our concern is that CBC does not seem to have adequate special ed support for a program with a reported 40% of the student body receiving special ed services. Um, we're just sort of concerned and wanted to bring to the board's attention that there may be a need for some training, some oversight, and perhaps some 
advocacy for additional um, resources when it comes to students needing support to accommodate and address their disabilities. Um, we sort of liken it to our, our experience of having a child with, quote, invisible disabilities has been that um, the, the response to our child's challenges has been largely to see them as behavioral rather than as manifestations of a disability. And if I were to make a comparison, I think our concern is that um, there may be some discrimination sort of based on the, the, the type of disability. I'm, I'm guessing that if CDCC had a student who needed, say, uh, sign language interpreting, um, that, that, prov that accommodation would be provided for them. It would be worked out you know, through their IEP and that CBCC would not in a, be in a position to say, we're going to deny a student access to a program uh, because of their need for sign language interpretation um, because that accommodation is not, is not reasonable. Um, I, I think that our student needs some additional supports and we need some additional communication around the supports that our child needs. Um, and it's it's been really, really um, concerning to hear a lot of feedback in sort of um, after the fact or in response to us asking questions about how our students doing. Um, so I think we just wanted the board to be aware of that, that there that there may be a need. And, and I think we can say as as voters um, and as taxpayers that, um, you know, if if ultimately it's a budgetary issue, then um, there I think that you would you might find that there are lots of parents who would be willing to advocate for more. Um, and then the second thing that I wanted to just um, share is that we just went through a uh, appeal of a of a denial of admission to CBCC for next year with our child. Um, and we are not taking that appeal to your attention formally um, at our child's request. However, we did, we did as parents wanna let you know what sort of transpired. So again, our child with a disability who has a significant trauma history, who has um, ADHD, as, as well as some other disabilities, <laughs> received a form denial um, a form letter denial of from the program that they wish to attend for next year with limited detail and they had no conversation with their instructors other than a, a, a recommendation that they appeal the denial. They were never told that their instructors didn't recommend them for, for, for admission. And then the other thing that was very concerning to us is that we were told that there was no appeal process for the point at which they were appealed um, admission or that they were denied admission. So they were denied admission after the first shadow day. Um, and the administration at CBCC was was very confident that their admissions process was correct and that it was appropriate to deny a student uh, admission without an appeal process. Um, again, sort of because of the privilege that our family has, I, I had a I had a suspicion that that was incorrect and um, we just kept asking questions outside of CDCC and ultimately had to go to AOE to get information that that was indeed incorrect um, and that our child was was to be afforded a appeal of the denial, um, especially as a child a child with a disability. Um, and then, so we've gone through that that process. The process has been much better. The communication has been better. It's been more trauma informed. Um, our child has been treated with a, a bit more regard, which um, you know I think the the use of a form letter for an for a currently enrolled student um, who you who you know has disabilities is is um, concerning. But throughout the process, we've been told that the application process is meant to be blind. Um, it's a, it meant to be a blind ad admissions process whereby you don't you don't seek any information about a child's disability. Um, and I just wanted the board to be aware that I, I think that that is a there's a fundamental issue with that concept, with the concept of a of a blind admissions process because the admissions process isn't isn't built from a trauma-informed and um, sort of like disability-empowered perspective. And so if you make, <coughs> excuse me, the application and admissions process blind, 
you potentially are engaging in a discriminatory, discriminatory process by not creating space for individuals with disabilities who may need accommodations even within the admissions process. So for example, our child probably needed some coaching around the admissions process. And even if that wasn't appropriate, maybe we as their parents needed some coaching around the admissions process. Our child is impulsive. Um, they probably would have needed specific scaffolding around the expectations for that day and maybe some skills to use to um, address their impulsivity. So whether addressing the application and, and admissions process is through the creation of um, you know, additional resources for individuals with disabilities or whether it's it's through modifications of the admissions process. I, I think that the admissions process is inherently um, inherently flawed right now. So um, that's sort of sort of what we wanted to share substantively. The last thing that I'll say, I'm, I know I've taken a lot of time, is just that, again, returning to where we started, we are a family who has profound privilege, socioeconomically, educationally, professionally. And this, the process of navigating um, the admissions and, and denial uh, process for, for our child has been challenging and time consuming and energy consuming. Um, so I think accessibility overall is an issue. I cannot imagine the number of families who have experienced something similar who ha haven't had access to the resources that our family has um, in order to, to advocate on behalf of their kids. Um, and so I think that, I, I hope that that's sort of part of the mission of CDCC um, as, a, as a CTE um, and that creating more accessibility in the, in the admissions process can be a priority so that, um, so that kids don't get a message that, that they're not worth it and that there's, they're not worth an explanation um, and that they, they and their families, um, you know, are, are, that it's, that it's, that it's okay for them to be denied without explanation. Um, I think that it's, it's something just to, to examine overall. So that's, that's it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you very much. I, Jason, you have your hand raised. Jason Gingo. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Jason Gingle, Montpelier High School principal. I was also a career center technical director at both Randolph Technical Career Center and Burlington Career Center for an over seven year period. Thank you for providing this platform for public comment. I'd like to reiterate what has been said this evening and remind the CVCC board that CVCC is part of the public education system. And while CVCC may not be an LEA, it receives federal funding and state grants which require it to work and teach to all students. In our monthly CVC superintendent slash director principals regional meeting, an item on the agenda states, meeting objectives, ensuring all students have access to education that works. While it's commendable that CVCC is ensuring all students have access to education, I want to underscore the importance of inclusivity. It's crucial that CVCC not only allows access to all students, but also continues to work with them and learn from enrolled students rather than resorting to dismissals or using enrollment as a tool to change behavior. Be aware of the rhetoric that a new building will save CVCC or fix all the challenges CVCC may face. CVCC is dangerously close to breaking federal and state laws when dismissing students carelessly without following its policy and ignoring 504 and IEP laws. If you continue to rush to dismiss students rather than work with some of our most vulnerable students or students who just wish to avoid attending their local high school, your argument for needing a new building will not matter because you still won't have full programs. While I understand the board cannot respond to public comments, I want to reiterate my openness to further discussion. I'm always available to discuss any concerns or issues you might have or your curiosity about why I spoke this evening. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jason. Uh, any further public comments? Thank you. 
you all very much. Um, move on to approve the agenda. Um, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second, can I? Uh, discussion? Any issues? All right. Uh, do we, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, so the agenda for tonight is approved. <coughs> uh, the consent agenda. Purpose of this agenda item is to allow the board to vote on business items without discussion prior to voting as provided under Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, the first one is the approval of minutes. So do we want to do this as a slate? Is that the best way to do it? If, if people are prepared to. However, I did send the nomination for the second uh, mm -hmm. staffing personnel just this afternoon. So you might not have had a chance to look at it. That's, that's right. Did, did everybody hear Jody on that? We received uh, an email from her late in the day um, with a nomination for a plumbing Instructor. Yep. Yep. Um, are we comfortable with uh, this as a slate, the consent agenda, or would we like to do it one at a time? I'll make the motion we approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. The consent agenda is approved. Board reports. Student representatives to the board. I don't see Chase here tonight. Oh, that's too bad. He said he was going to come. He thought he needed to ask for funds for our end of year activities day. And I said, no, no, you don't have to ask the board for that. You can just talk about it. <laughs> and maybe he thought he didn't have to come. So I apologize if that was the message he got. Okay. Uh, program presentation and cosmetology. Where would you like to be? Um, I'll be over there. Is that okay? I'll send you over there. Well, <laughs> Yeah, the first years. His first years. Okay, so my some I had some students that wanted to be here tonight, but between their exam, trades fair, field trips, they, they're like, if I miss another practice or work, I'm in trouble. So they're like, take this, take this, take this, talk about this. <laughs> and so like then I was writing down all my notes and I became overwhelmed with all the stuff that we've done, but all good stuff. So super excited to share. Don't feel obligated to look at this stuff now. I will leave it and if it's okay, I'll pick it up in the morning, Joey. <laughs> um, I also brought these things just for you to reference later. Like you guys can share and check it out. Um, so first years, oh, sorry, also Christina Courier. <laughs> I, a uh, little bit of my background is I started here as a student, as an adult student in cosmetology many years ago, but then I graduated and I just kind of never left. <laughs> so I love what the tech center does. I love everything that our program does. It's amazing. Um, my husband also graduated from building trades, so we didn't meet that way, but <laughs> so. Um, over the years, teaching has evolved. The industry has evolved. Everything has changed. So we've had to change with it. Um, repeatedly over the years, I've learned that I need to learn more how to do different textured hair. I need to know better, like, what are taxes? How do I pay taxes? How do I know how much I should get paid? I don't know how to pay for a car or... <laughs> so over the years, it's been evolving, all of those things with the curriculum. So we have our standard of curriculum that the AOE says you need to do, haircutting, color, safety, um, infection control, all of those things. And there is a ton, I don't know, some of you know about the program, but there's a ton of science. So you've got microbiology, biology, um, 
sanitation, infection control, anatomy and physiology, chemistry, electricity, all of those things. And then, so we, when we teach that, we try to do the hands-on stuff so the kids are engaged. So like when we're talking about viscosity, I like to make oobleck and they play with oobleck and we like, mm -hmm. they talk about the surface and it's a, it's a solid, but it's a liquid, <laughs> you know, all of those fun things. And it just helps them connect better. And then, so we keep building on those foundations. They learn all of the practical applications, um, hair cutting, the basics of color theory, like we do a paint and sip with hot chocolate and tea. <laughs> um, so I just give them the primary colors and then we literally, they're like, oh, but the lady in the video has chartreuse. I'm like, but you have to make it. <laughs> so, so they have to learn like to get there, I have to do X, Y, Z. So that's all part of the first year. And in that, we also have to build community because we have these students for two years. And as you can imagine, any high school student as a junior coming in through their senior year, they have a lot of frontal lobe development that's cooking and they're developing. So I put a ton of focus and life, um, oh my golly, what's life's last name? Legeros. Yes. <laughs> City scholar. Yes. So he's been an incredible help this year, like in getting him right in at the beginning and building the team and like when little rumblings begin, we stop it immediately and I have zero tolerance for it. So, so far this year, knock on wood, it's worked fairly well <laughs> with my group, um, but they also work very hard to communicate clearly with each other and stuff. So that's really been a huge help, but also we're teaching them to go into industry. So they have to be able to work together to find balance, even though it's not always rainbows and butterflies and we don't always see things the same and we don't always agree but they have to find that that space that plane where they can work together and so they've worked really hard to do that and i am incredibly proud of them every day when they do that because when you can see them be in an angry space but still work together and find that balance it's it's amazing to see that especially at that age like it like i've been teaching so long that to watch that i'm super impressed um so we do all of the basic stuff, all the theory. They just did their exam and we paired up with a couple of other tech centers. So they came in and they did their state exam and their students actually, well, they all passed, really, um, but with varying margins, but they passed. <laughs> so the second year students that came in from the other schools passed and they'll be cosmetology, like full ready for industry ready as soon as they get their high school diplomas. And then my students were able to participate in that. And then next year when they get ready to actually do theirs again, they'll be more ready for it. They will have experienced it. And even the other day when we did it Thursday, it was an eight hour window with very little breaks. They, they were like after, they were saying, oh, my legs hurt, that was really tiring, you were right, I should learn how to stand better. <laughs> like all of those, like, you have to watch those ergonomics. So that was another huge thing they did this year that was very exciting. Um, we participate in Skills USA, so the boards are from different things that my students did this year. Um, Miss Ida Astic, she is gold, so she's gonna go to Atlanta with me in um, June, the last week of June. And so we'll be participating in job scale demo and she'll explain where the Marcel iron came from and the history behind that. And that's the other part that I really deeply believe in is that we need to know where we were to know where we're going. So everything from Marcel Berteau to Nikola Tesla to Madam CJ Walker, all of those things, all of those different people that contributed to the industry. I think it's really great to have that foundation and we, throw that in for their reports and their history and their research. So we do a lot of writing. Um, the students are doing really great with researching different companies. Um, one of the goals for this class this year, they wanted to make a difference with the environment or help to make a difference with that. So they had to research different recycling companies and they narrowed it down to two. It was either Glow Recycling or Matter of Trust. Matter of Trust, um, they took hair and they would actually ship us a giant machine to make hair mats, but we would need 180 square feet for like a room to store with ventilation, which 
I know it's not going to happen, but also that's that's a lot. So they they came to that conclusion on their own that that's too much for this year. Maybe another time, but we we landed on Globe Recycling and WCAX. If you guys if you go online, you'll find it. So they actually came and interviewed the students and stuff. But again, I was so proud of them with that because even when I'm researching like someone to work on my house, I do not do the depth at which they did. Like they were like, how do you file your taxes? Are you um, a nonprofit? Are you actually a nonprofit? Where are your certifications? Where are your, you know, all of these different things. Where do all these products go? They wanted, they grilled that poor woman and they did an amazing job. So again, so proud of them <laughs> for, they are ready for the world. I'm not worried about them at all. Um, the other thing that we've integrated this year um, is Qunity. So if you guys have a chance to check this out, I'm so excited. It has eight different modules and it teaches them everything on like, how do you look at money? What is your family's culture around money? What are your goals? Where do you want to go with money? But then it also teaches you financial literacy, like your personal finance, but then how do you transfer that into business and goals? So currently we're working through that and they're creating their own financial aspects, but then we're applying that to their business plan for next year because next year they run the business and they're responsible for that. And they want to go to New York City at the end of next year. So they have to raise some money <laughs> to do that. Um, there's an international beauty show that's in Manhattan. And if they go for two days, it's very expensive, but they're like, we think we can do it. And this group is super ambitious. So if they can keep this ambition and this energy going, there's no doubt in my mind, but also knock on wood, um, that the communication keeps going, that senioritis doesn't get them, and all this other stuff. <laughs> so they're gonna be back here requesting that. Mm -hmm. and they they will have to because they'll have to create an entire presentation and like their financials behind it. So press them on their financials because they they're earning the certificate. They better know what they're talking about. <laughs> so those are the major things. Um, certificates that they brought in. Uh, we've had some really great guest speakers. The rest of the year, they're going to kind of work on their business plan, and that's their really big, big focus. But because they just finished their their end of the year exam, they have two more guest days this week, and then we're touching, dipping our toes in, if you will, how to cure, pun intended, <laughs> um, more in depth with acrylic nails, gel nails, um, deserology, which um, so that's the hair and makeup for people that have passed away. So they'll be touching on that, and then also special effects makeup and theater makeup. So the, that will be the last cool. few weeks because I wanted to gracefully glide into graduation and calmly, in theory. <laughs> now that the exam is done, we can do that. But super excited for next year. So Cindy McCritchie, um, my background is very different. <laughs> Christina's. Uh, I graduated from O'Brien's in 1990, so a little while ago. Um, I've been a salon owner, and I've also worked for major, major manufacturers, uh, Matrix and Paul Mitchell. So I come from like industry, show, a little bit more out there kind of thing. Um, but I've been teaching for 10 years here at Central Market Center. And this year I have second years. We do pretty similar. Um, we teach the first years to learn everything, um, you know, throughout go throughout the book. Uh, second year, how I kind of handle it is um, love Canvas. Jody brought Canvas on, and I love it. Um, everything in one spot. Um, I utilize it. For everything, all my assignments now go in there, um, and how it works in my classroom for second years is they open. I open on Monday; they're due on Friday. This is huge for 12th graders. They've been told what to do their whole career, when they're going to do it, how they're going to do it. Time management—they have no clue. So my year is really spent trying to get them to do time management. And that we have clients that come in from outside, they have to figure out how to balance this. Your assignments are due, but 
you have a client today, so how are you going to work this in? I don't overload them with assignments, but I really, it's tough to get them to figure out how they're going to balance that. So that, that usually goes through the first of the year, them struggling with that time management. After that, they kind of get a little bit better. Um, and it's really just setting them up for industry. The second half of the year, we really focus on getting them ready for the exam. That is um, actually going to happen Wednesday. They're going to take their written exam. Uh, if they pass that, we'll move on to the practical. But we, every week, we hit it hard with both studying. Um, so that kind of plays into Canvas at this point. And that's kind of it for second years. It's really practice and getting those skills honed in and ready for the industry. Guy, you had a question a minute ago. I might have to ask Jim for permission, but I'm not sure. <laughs> hey, Jim, how you doing? <laughs> nice to see you. Um, <laughs> so I, I actually I have a couple of questions. One is, um, you know, you know, we in the, at the Career Center, we hear the high rate of retirements among a lot of careers. Number one, is that true in in this profession? Uh, and the other comment I have is, you know, you've always been a very popular program. So obviously people, you know, you know, come to you and want to be there. And the second question is, uh, what are we doing to, and I ask this of other programs as well, to attract males? Because it seems to be female, you know, dominated. Uh, so those are my two questions. I can answer some of them. Okay. <laughs> All right. So thank you for your question, Scott. Um, no. So actually, the, the question about bringing males in, I'm super excited that I have a student that had been with me before. And because of some medical situations, he wasn't able to come back right away. So it's been a couple years, but he's coming back next year. So that's really exciting. So he'll join us as a second year. And he came in for the interview process and like the, um, the days that they're supposed to. And it went really well. And he meshed in with my current group so well that I was just like, yay, they have a big brother. So <laughs> that's really exciting. Um, and then something else that I've been working on, and I'll know more details on Thursday, um, I'm working on getting my barbering license. So I'm hoping, in theory, that will help bring more males into the program and that if we can do that i have to also work with the aoe and jody like this is all very much a baby idea is that if because cosmetology technically is only in a thousand hours but we have our kids for 1500 if they have good attendance or 1600 if they really do great <laughs> so in theory if i could patch in barbering as well then perhaps maybe if the AOE gods and OPR are with us, we could double certify them. But this is baby dreams, very new ideas. Yes. I remember last year when you had students here, mm -hmm. a number of them were interested in barbering. Yeah. And so it's yeah. carried over. So that's it's, exciting. Yeah, the barbering industry right now is booming. Mm -hmm. And we have a student that has Miles Court and like my husband's friend's son works there and I have a friend that I went to high school with that has a barber shop up in Winooski so I mean it's really it's really great and a great group of people to to work with so I'm super on the more Thursday <laughs> about that and then our numbers are still good I'm not sure how many applicants you had this year but we're, they're always in the 40s round one we had 41 applicants for 16 spots yeah so yeah, we are a very popular um, program. Um, and then you asked about retirement. And this job, even though it seems like, oh, it's, it, you know, we, we curl hair, we paint nails, it is very straining on the body. We stand all day. We deal with different people all day. So it can be mentally challenging as well. 
because when you come to work, you have to smile and be present, and they don't want to hear about your bad day, you know? Um, so it can be challenging in that aspect, too. A lot of times, like, I could use my class, for instance. My class started with 30, 15 actually graduated, and today, I know it's been a few years, but there's actually only two of us still practicing. So even though we have large numbers and we're putting them out, they don't make it for years and years and years. So it does turn over, but the industry still needs us. They need us for even the amount of years that we can make it. A lot of people enter, uh, they get carpal tunnel, have bad shoulders, things like that is what puts them out. So chemical exposures. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think I would add to the um, non-traditional gender piece is that we're learning in some of our other programs that if you have more than one, when you accept only one, it's harder to feel like you have your cohort there. But when you accept more than one, folks feel a little bit safer in the program. It's a little more acceptable. And we're seeing growth. If you um, skim through that Perkins 25 plan, you can see that next year in a lot of our heavies, we have a lot more females, which are non-traditional gender for those heavy programs. And, it, and many of them have given that feedback that because they saw people like them in the program when they visited, that's why they were excited to apply and excited to accept when they got accepted. And then some of the students currently in the programs are like, when I first came to visit, there were nobody like me. And then I was so happy to show up for program preview and see there was at least one other person like me. And so that has made a difference in some of our other programs and I bet it would in cosmetology as well. Yeah. That's it. I'm wondering what the level of collaboration and community is as they go through this experience over two years together. Mm -hmm. So before COVID, we had many community services that we did and I loved it. Um, but it it's definitely trickier now. Like we used to work with home health and hospice and um, we, uh, I took a group with MedPro, we went up to the hospital and gave services to nurses, doctors, receptionists, we would bus up there and do like mini manicures, pedicures. Mm -hmm. um, we used to work with the Council of Aging and they would come and bus people in. So we did a lot more before COVID. But among themselves, yeah. is there a strong community? Oh, what you mean with my students? Yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. Like, it, if you ever come in there, it's very strong community. <laughs> and it's actually, I, I've really appreciated, again, this group, they'll come in and they'll notice someone, because they're with each other for four plus hours a day, right? So if someone's even sitting a little bit off or just a little more like this, they notice and they actually check in on each other and they actually support each other or they notice if someone's getting frustrated and they'll go do a check-in or they'll be like, hey, hey Courier, did you notice that? You know, it's it's really, I, I appreciate them so much for that energy that they put into that. But it's it's been a long journey getting there and then also like many years of me experiencing and <laughs> learning and continuing my education to kind of learn those like little subtleties like that to kind of help, help better and be more effective as an instructor. So. Yeah, and when I, I have second years this year, but when I had first years, um, at the beginning of the year, I took their phones away. We have, I have a phone box. And I put, they were in the box, it's clear, you can see through it. Um, and actually, we had a, a fire driller one day, and I grabbed the boss and brought it out, and they were so impressed that I didn't leave their phones behind. <laughs> so from that point on, they like trusted me with their phones. Right. Before that, they were always like, what is my But now they, they trust, and um, it actually it taught them to be more present with each other, and not so worried about who's on the other end of the phone, and they became a little closer, and they learned to communicate rather than this, they, they actually would talk to each other and have good conversation. So um, I feel like that, they didn't like it. 
let me tell you, I was the bad person that year, but they got over it. It's a great story. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Yes. What is the difference between barbary and haircutting or whatever? What's the, because you were saying you were trying to get that license. What's the difference? Is it like shaving heads or? <laughs> um, the, the largest legal, the legal difference is a um, barber can shave you with a straight razor, you know, like, not like Sweeney Todd, but you know what I mean, like, with the, like without you dying. So you can do the straight razor and then, and they do like the hot shave and, you know, all of those, the more luxurious skin treatments for that. And then also the other difference is um, that cosmetologists we do uh, we all all, we things. do all the spa services so yeah. we do nails makeup um we do a different type of facial yeah. so we're more on the spa on end and hair um but they do everything with hair yeah except they can shave we cannot yeah and then also with the shaving there's a really rich history with barbering mm -hmm. and like literally when you're going through the barbering course each stroke of the razor has a different meaning and like an intent behind it, which is really cool, I think. So it's really, yes. I know. When I learned that, I was like, cool. And you're- Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that, I was just sure. curious. You, you envision that the barbering, if it happens, I get we're, if we're early, Maybe I um, <laughs> would be an add-on rather than you would come just for barbering. Correct. Only because, well, unless we get the new center and we have more room, I don't know. <laughs> um, you mean when? Yes, there you go. Can I have a whole other wing? No, I'm just kidding. That will set our builders right over the edge. <laughs> but yes, it, because honestly, with the, the time, with the tools that we use, um, the amount of products we use, things like that, it it's literally goes so much hand in hand, minus the straight razor and the history that we learned behind the additional barbering. And like my kids now learn about like bloodletting and like the barber pole and like the pat, you know, the history there. But to know like each stroke and why you do that and the safety, safety behind it and <laughs> all of those things, I think will be amazing to add on to it. So it's a higher credential? It would be, well, level because then it, it just gives the students another opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Because now if our students go to a barber shop, they can start there, but they can't be a barber. They could only do what cosmetology mm -hmm. licenses allow for, that scope of practice. So are the, the hour, is there more hours that you have to do? There would be an additional room? amount of hours, correct. And but those are the all the OPR, AOE questions. They have to be so nice and they cook them. Could it be eventually, you know, if we get a new center, I and mean, it wasn't planned either, um, <laughs> be like, an, is there a point where the students could like choose to go more cosmetology and more barbering? Is there a point where they could buy off and choose a different Maybe. one track for the other so they don't they, they didn't the, want the to get dual like maybe it would sit different for the exam like if they didn't want to do the bar rating exam but like right now cosmetology is our focus 100 percent, and that's what opr and aoe that is our our litmus test right so that would always be the focus but if you're learning it and if the exam adds whatever to whatever the state would require us to add on to it that we do if the student says no nah, i don't want to be for that part then i but who I don't know because it's maybe I do. Scott, you had a question. Just really quickly, did I see bacon on the um, the slideshow that you were showing? And oh yes, okay. So I love food. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of so I wasn't crazy. I wasn't like <laughs> no. hungry. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that, um, as an instructor, we all notice, I'm sure, is that as we get closer to vacations and things like that, students either are excited because woo, it's vacation, mm -hmm. or they're like, oh no, I don't have food at home, or I don't have my friends, or I don't have supports at home. So. I really like to incorporate a meal 
for them because it lets them kind of calm down, bring it together, and then, like, when you're breaking bread with people, it just kind of, you know, does that. And I have so many students, and I've had so many students that over the years that this has really benefited. And sometimes if there's extra, because I love Costco as well, not sponsored. <laughs> um, like if there's extra, they can kind of take it with them quietly and it's not a big deal. And then I know at least for a little bit of time, they have a little more food. So yeah, that's a spot that kind of, it's important to me, but, and they love it. And they usually get to pick their, their food. So this year we've had breakfast, we've had um, panini party, we've had a rainbow party where each different group, they actually wanted to bring in stuff, so they brought in like different colors. There's a picture up there of that. Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool, and they love it. Is there any other questions? Share the slideshow later. Okay. Yeah. Or we can share it or whatever. Uh, Lyman, real, real quick one. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge all the males on the board to maybe put together a calendar to uh, attract more males to the you know to the program. Uh, but in all seriousness, the other question I usually ask people who are presenting is about their space, and I'm gonna make a statement that says, you know, as I walk around as a board member uh, at a career fair or uh, open house. Uh, I would say that you have, you're probably the envy of the career center in terms of the space you have. Is that an appropriate comment? We do have quite a bit of space, but there's actually two classes in that space. So not just one class. We have 32 students between, the, or we can have up to 32. Up to 32, yeah. And, um, you know, even still, at this point, I find like there's not enough space because um, there's nowhere to do facials. We do them at the sink. You know, there's um, and the second year group doesn't have a classroom. We don't. You know, we we have plenty of clinic space, but I don't actually have a classroom. So sometimes I have to teach looking around these six foot stations with mirrors. Like I call it the house of mirrors because they're all the way around the room. Um, we do it. They have little carts and we make it work. Um, but it's, you know, so yeah, we are probably because we do have quite a bit of space, but you have to think of it that way. There's two full classes in there. I was going to say too, even to, comparatively to other tech centers, we are very blessed with, with our space and with our resources. So we are thankful yeah. for that for sure. We are just a skosh spoiled comparatively. Yeah. So besides this, forever grateful. <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Yes, thank this you. Was great. And feel free to peruse. For sure. <laughs> okay. Hey. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Uh, on to the committee reports. We'll start with the finance committee. Stop met with Michelle and I. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't have a meeting. Okay. TBD. Is there anything? No. It's there. coming up. That's yeah. why. That's probably why you have a business manager's report in today's. Excellent. Information. Uh, facilities. Yeah, we met last week. Um, and there's a couple asks of the board this evening. Um, so I'll just give you a kind of a quick where we're at because um, I didn't take your notes here, so I'm going to you guys and Guy chime in, please. Um, you know, we're in the visioning stage phase of this whole thing, right? So of the living new, new center, potential new center. Um, and so there's been a lot of work done with stakeholder meetings and, you know, Trips, Collins, getting um, us, the facilities committee, to come up with a vision, vision statement. And that was our ask, one ask of the board tonight was to look at our vision statement and say that you guys are comfortable with it. Jody did a really good job um, with some feedback from folks uh, putting the draft together. We all like it. We think you will too. Um, so, just moving that up, I'm kind of going for the thanks. 
Um, we are starting the site selection conversations. Um, I think, unfortunately, we may have not put the parameters down far enough. <laughs> and so we have like 194 sites identified within Berlin, Barry, and East Montpelier. So that is way too many. Um, so we are meeting again on the 21st with uh, Schrutz Collins coming back with a more condensed list mm -hmm. based on some things we asked them. You know, if it's a wetland and it's not just a little tiny piece of the property, get it out of there. Um, there's a, if there's artists and commercial stuff going on, you know, maybe not. Um, the parameters I used was the 20 acres or more and whether it would be uh, able to be uh, sewer be available. Within a thousand feet. Yeah. And maybe that thousand feet needs to be brought down to. You know, we're talking about some of that. Um, my comment was if it's on a dirt road, like probably needs to go. I mean, there's there's some things that we need to do to lead that down. And once we get that new list on the 21st, we'll do it again. Um, there may be some more that we can, we as a group will look at and say no. Um, so that's where we're at. And there was a couple of intriguing, intriguing sites that we didn't even really think about. Go ahead, Jim. Terry, um, are, are they still at least entertaining if there's an existing property around? We can, you know, renovate in some manner? Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, if you don't like looking on the screen at it, you should have the packet or the um, agenda from last week's facilities meeting in one of your emails, so you can dig down into that as well. Mm -hmm. But basically our vision was CBCC's state-of-the-art facility serves all eligible students in our region, staffed and resourced appropriately. That'll expand capacity for increased enrollment versus applicant percentage, increased academic achievement through that full day programming um, with academics in a full school day, pathways to advanced career credentials similar to what we're doing in some of our programming already, and strengthening partnerships with middle schools across the region to improve student access mm -hmm. and eliminate barriers to, to participation, which is one way uh, to respond to some of the concerns that we heard here tonight. Also on that statement are the board goal and mission statement for the board and also the CBCC mission statement. And that's, that's mm -hmm. basically the vision that the facilities committee recommends the board approve for this project. Are we doing that tonight? It's not it's on the not agenda. It wasn't warned, yeah. so um, we can keep it. it. Next month. Yeah, we will actually need to have another meeting before then, anyways, because we we have another facilities meeting next week yeah. to look at the um, smaller, condensed, hopefully, version of the sites and to approve the RFP make a recommendation for the RFP for the welding renovation. Mm -hmm. And we will need those two things um, also determined by the full board. So we're gonna need a, like a lunch meeting next week after Tuesday. So we can put this on there. Great. And then we've also started some community outreach. I don't know if any of you guys have seen the presentation that Troy Collins put together, but they did it at the trades fair before the trades fair really started. It, they did mm -hmm. it in this room. Um, then you did one with the superintendents and the principals. With the principals on Thursday, superintendents on Friday, okay. and tomorrow night we have a virtual forum. Okay. So that's, that piece of it's also underway. Great. Thank you. Anything else day. from the committee, from that committee, or questions for the committee? Guy. Oh, yeah, the other basket. Uh, Terry, uh, you know, you and I talked about this at the, the last meeting. You know, I think. You know, I view this as probably one of the, uh, you know, biggest projects the board is going to have to deal with in the next, you know, couple of years. And so I would encourage, you know, anyone who is not on a committee to join the committee, number one. And number two, if you can't join the committee, certainly join the stuff that's going to be presented because, you know, communities will have a question like, you know, the individual who you know, talk tonight about, you know, uh, just because you're expanding doesn't mean it's going to solve all the problems. So those are the kinds of questions that are going to come up. And I think, you know, we need to be responsive to that. So, uh, 
it's it's a uh, you know it's an interesting process. I mean, uh, you know, as a school board member, you don't get to go through this. Well, maybe one once in a lifetime, you know. So uh, you know, it certainly is an interesting process, and it's you know, I hate to say this, career changing for us. Thanks, Guy. That was the other ask, and I kind of forgot about it. Um, is we do feel like we need more okay. board members to join the committee. It's 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 a big responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's a big uh, yeah, big ask. Yeah, yeah. So to want to take on. Yeah, yeah. Scott's only on like three committees. <laughs> 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 uh -huh. um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Daggers. <laughs> I know uh, Mike's up there, and and he thank thank you for being in this one. We reorganized, and we didn't put you anywhere because you weren't there to say where you would want to be. So there is a space on finance, um, and or you can join this facilities group, or both, or everything. Well, definitely not everything. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I heard somebody say that they don't get to be on a facilities com committee more than once, but unfortunately in some school districts, it's, it happens every couple of years, there's a f facilities committee um, and, it, and it's a real tough thing to pull off uh, building a school or uh, really doing anything right now. So um, I, I wish everybody the best in, in, in trying to get that accomplished. Um, but if I have to go somewhere, I would choose finance. So. Perfect. I'll add you to that list. <clears throat> and they meet the first Tuesday of every month at four right now. But if if that doesn't work for the three of you on that committee, let's make sure we find a time that does. Great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, the program quality committee, I guess that's me. Um, we we had a, a good discussion today about the design and fab program and also EMS2. Um, and we have some recommendations to the board for both of those. Um, just really quickly, as far as the, um, no, we don't have, well, sort of. Um, as, as far as the design and fab goes, uh, we currently have two students in the third round who are interested as their first choice. Um, and we also have two students that would like to be uh, co-op for design and fab. Unfortunately, four doesn't make eight, yeah. which, is our, which is our minimum. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we talked about a bunch of different ideas. And one of them, we don't want to lose the program. And we think that if we don't, if we don't somehow carry it through next year in some capacity, uh, it, it's probably going to go away or may go away. Um, so the idea is we'd like to wait until August 1st to close the door on the program. Um, and if we have to close the door on the program for this year, we would um, keep Juliana on uh, for a year to build the program, to do some marketing, to work with art teachers, um, and really try and get it so that we can we can offer a, a rich program for the 20, 25, 26 school year. And that's the recommendation from our committee. Um, and we can't have action on that tonight because it's not on the agenda. It is on the agenda. As an action item? Yeah. Is it? Well, oh, there it is. Down there. Okay. If I had been at the meeting tonight, yes. I would have recommended that Giuliani connect with folks at the Governor's Institute on the Arts because there's welding there. And I don't know how many of the students come from the schools that feed into the Career Center. Yeah, uh, guy. So Lyman, I I may have missed missed this, but so is the collaboration with Norwich University totally off the map, or uh, because I think there was, if I remember correctly, there was 
Well, there was some some uh, excitement about that originally, but I don't know where we're at with that. Yeah, the, we were really excited about the program. We wanted to get it running at the same time as Norwich. They didn't get it up and running as quickly as we did. Um, they started with two students and they basically stayed on the Norwich campus. This is the first semester that any Norwich students have been at the Granite Museum. So they are using that space uh, two afternoons a week um, with the students that they have in that program. Our students have the space in the morning so we do share some tools, we share some of the equipment, and we can, we can share the computers. I don't think that we've shared a, a lot of that yet. So we have that. Uh, because of the degree that our previous instructor had, he was able to teach for that um, program at Norwich, and thus our kids were able to get those credits, or at least six of them out of the program last year. Giuliano doesn't have the same credentials and background as he did, and so Norwich would need to go through another process with us to determine if that's feasible. So right now we've lost that piece because we shifted individuals in charge of the program. But they are actually using the space and there is a potential for collaboration that just hasn't really worked out yet. So just as a, an aside, I was, uh, someone asked me whether we would consider uh, developing a CAD program for the granite industry. And I don't know where that falls, and I don't know whether people have heard about that or not, uh, but it seems to be a big um, a big ask. So, Guy, that's an, that's an interesting uh, thing you bring up because, in fact, uh, that's part of the program, and we haven't done a great job of explaining that. Um, CAD, CNC, 3D printing, these are all components of the program. And it was interesting when, when Giuliano and I were talking, I said, oh, all I really know about it on, as a board member is the granite part of it. And he said, that's funny because in the public, they don't equate it with granite at all. They think design and fab must mm -hmm. be using CNC and, and, and CAD for, you know, building parts and things like that. So it, it's obviously clear that we need to, um, you know, build our communication out on what exactly that program is. But, you know, he's, he said that there is a lot of opportunity for these kids, even if they opt to not go into the granite industry, if they learn all of those CAD skills and everything like that. So um, that's why we talked about if, if it doesn't work, that that's the time he's gonna spend getting into our sending schools. And because it's the only program in the state, he can go to any school in the state and, and work with the art teachers, work with the tech ed teachers and, and tell them what we can bring. So I think, I think we could really build it up um, you know, he, he started in January. Um, and so I think, I think we need to give that opportunity is my recommendation anyway, um, regardless of how many students we get by August 1st. Um, is August 1st a problem? I kind of see Michelle going, going back in the readings and stuff. He was, the teacher was on a non renewed contract as of June 30th. I'll no longer be employed by us. That was always questioning. Which isn't a problem. Yeah, no, we could it's still not have. a problem. They would just resubmit the application. I'm not worried. It was just, yeah. Okay. We just couldn't. Because they're hired so late in the year. Yeah. yeah. So that was fine. And then, and then the other issue that we, we talked about um, was I was concerned with the students that are that potentially are enrolled and then if it doesn't work by August 1st, what do they do? And so Jody and I talked about um, letting them know exactly what's happening mm -hmm. and do you want to be a part of this process that may, you know, get derailed in, in August. Um, it's and very similar to what we've done with uh, the students who apply for welding in that if they were accepted, they were accepted in a contingency that the right. program is approved and, 
and they all are aware that it might not be approved by the Agency of Education, that we don't have control over that. And so it would be a similar, except it pending this. I don't see why the agency won't just approve it. We have a few more steps tonight, and then our minutes have to go to them, and then we hopefully will get a response. Good. And hopefully a positive one. So. Can we, can we skip to 6-5 and come back? Or you can't do that now? I don't think we can do, that, do now. that now. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Any questions on, on program quality? Oh, uh, EMS 2. <laughs> sorry, we talked about EMS 2. <laughs> sorry, Carl. Um, and, and we have a, a, a different issue in which we have plenty of students and we need to figure out the funding for it. And the, the issue is uh, a discrepancy between um, what we pay through the fast forward program and what uh, VTSU is looking for for a tuition for our students. And so we need to come up with ideas for how to close the gap between what we pay and what they want us to pay. Ideas for us to collaborate that are financially viable for both VTSU and us. And we did not come up with those ideas in our meeting today, so. But send them in, right? Carl is here, he'll take all the ideas you have. And in all we'll ideas, we'll sponsorships. Donations. Donations. <laughs> <laughs> what, can I ask, what's the gap? <laughs> Or is it that depends. Different? So um, first off, remember that tuition, we charge tuition on students based on a six semester average. So it's on the students that have been here in the past, not the students we have this yeah. year or next year at the beginning of the year, that sort of thing. The other piece is that our students who are high school students, there's the total tuition is $18,901 for next year. Um, if you're an adult student, your tuition is has to be less than 40% of the total tuition for high school students. So it's 6,500 is what it's been set at. Um, and our tuition to VTSU paying the, what they claim is the fast forward rate has been approximately. 15 and change, was it? It's looking like it's gonna be around 14, 15,000 dollars per student. Between 14 and 15,000 dollars per student. And part of that is it's 24 plus nine, so 33 credits that they earn throughout the, the year in the program. Some of it they're earning through the summer, um, but because they're not graduated from high school yet and they're still with us, we also pay that piece of it. So it's trying to help maintain this program, which is a one of the kind program in the state of Vermont, in the country we believe, um, and finding ways to keep it going. And so we have reached out to Sanders' office. We have reached out to the Welch office. We've constantly been in contact with VTSU trying to figure out like, what can we apply for? What ways can we work together to support this? What is, like, what is the base that you need? Carl teaches for the program. We pay him that he teaches for the program. So they, they only pay for hours above and beyond his contract a day with us. So thinking about that benefit to them so we just keep working through it, and we just want you aware of that and trying to find ways to, to keep this going in the future. Because the students tend to stay in Vermont and work for local EMS services. And they're already working for them mm -hmm. throughout the year, as many of you have already seen. So if anyone has ideas, do they send them to you or to Carl? Yes. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Is, I have a question. If you miss one full, no. Because that program may be able to help piggyback some of the costs because most of the students would be um, tuition non-graduate students. So the possibility if we fill that program, it could help. I mean, that's it. Yeah. I mean, that's really how that's we fund. Been the goal. That's how we fund all our programs, right? Some of them are at a deficit every year, mm -hmm. and some of them bring in more funds every year. Just the nature of the cost of the program in itself. And so that's how we keep it going. This is the first year we really looked at 
what would you what would your break even be and where are we in that and so as we keep looking at that we can consider that piece that's why they pay you the big bucks <laughs> thank you um, the superintendent's report you all have a copy of the superintendent's yep. report thank you to those of you that made it to the trades fair it was great to see you it, even though we ended up inside instead of outside it was lovely there was so much great participation and because our vendors our industry reps were in a with programs and students had a fun bingo activity where they could win, win really cool prizes and some of the businesses were giving away some fantastic other prizes like door prizes um, students were really engaged in talking to them and I think that we had a lot better connections than we have in the past and we, we definitely had feedback of you need to merge this together in the past because we would start with an kind of open house from 5:30 to 6:30 in the first two years that we did it and then we would move outside to where we had all of our industry reps and vendors and so this year everyone was supposed to be outside and kind of intermingled and then with the forecast we moved it all inside but we kept the intermingled and I think for the most part that it was really positive yes. we didn't have as many people as we have for open house but we we had a lot more than I think we've had in the last two years for the trades fair so it was great, That's great. Yeah. guy yeah I just wanted to you know, uh, you know I was able to attend and you know the vibe is is so inspiring so I you know want to thank you for doing it Number one, number two, uh, you know, I want to thank the staff and the students who have been award winners this year. Uh, that's really impressive. And I know we're going to be, you know, voting on, uh, you know, out of state conferences tonight. So that says something about, you know, the program. So, uh, you know, thank you very much for that. Yeah, Skills USA, they did phenomenal. Um, our work key scores are really good. I think the way we approached the testing this year was helpful. And if you didn't get a chance to vote for Teacher Appreciation Week and Teacher of the Year, and you have a, a vote, put it in there. All right. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, business office report. Yeah, so welcome to the first letter. Um, we weren't able to meet as a finance committee, so I, there are just some important things going on and we needed to kind of discuss them or get them out there. Um, recapping FY24, we had multiple positions that were not filled and as a result we have a, a healthy budget balance. We were going to use that towards um, the renovation of the new space and welding and for the um, new facilities project. Those are quite substantial undertakings. Um, May 20th was our request for proposals deadline. So hopefully by the 21st when facilities meets, we'll be able to present something to them. Um, the audit update, not included on this. I did get off the phone with the auditors today. They said they're 99.9% .9 done. Great. Da, 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 da. I'm hoping for the finance committee meeting in June, we will have a- 100% complete. But, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I told them definitely by July 1st or June 30th we need it, but I should have a, uh, a short list for finance to review on the 4th of next month, 6th of next month, and then we'll be able to report to the full board. Um, I do estimate estimate that last year there would still be a fund balance. Uh, again, it just affects us two different ways. We are not able to ch overcharge our sending schools if we don't expense their money. So we are going to give them some money back from last year. Mm -hmm. uh, it ends up being about $157,000. I anticipate that's about 50% of the surplus that we were bringing over. It's actually a good thing. It's not a bad so, thing. So I'm, ju I'm just curious. So for example, you know, our budget went down and we're having a meeting tomorrow. That money coming back to Twinfield, for example, could be money that we could use. It'd be counted as a revenue, yes. And There's how much would we get? You specific, we can talk about specific okay. specifics mm -hmm. later. Oh, all right. Um, but at the district, 
Yeah, yeah. Um, Probably not much. Yeah, in some districts, there are two ways that you can receive the money back. I think the district can receive it, and it can be counted as revenue, this year's revenue, mm -hmm. which might be an issue. If it's counted as this year, you need to spend it this year. Um, so okay. I am anticipating okay. the most of the most of the schools will use this as a credit towards their tuition for yep. next year. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a thousand dollars per FTE. Okay. So that's. Um, with the remainder, we're going to put it towards our big projects. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So it should be. It's not something I'm concerned about. It's actually a good problem to have, and I think our sending schools will be happy. Um, just looking into FY25, I wasn't sure if we'd be able to have a finance committee meeting prior to this taking effect, but there are new, there is a new um, tax, the child care contribution tax. Mm -hmm. uh, it will affect payroll taxes. The majority of business managers and school districts that I've talked to, the employer is um, taking the, is going to be doing the entire contribution this year, 0.44% because it's not, we haven't, it's not gone to the collective bargaining agreement yet. So that's something we need to bring up for negotiations. A quarter of that in the future could be paid by the employee if it's negotiated and the employer decides to as well. So just kind of looking forward to that, it wasn't, it wasn't anticipated, but it should be about 9,500, maybe up to $1,100, I'm guessing, based off if all of our positions are filled for next year. And the chart right there, I, I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory, but it's just showing you how we're utilizing our, mm -hmm. our, our funding. Um, we're doing really well utilizing our grants. Sometimes they're very specific on what we can and can't use them for. So fortunately, as much as we want to spend 100% of the grant, we may not be able to. Um, the time grant is one of them. I don't anticipate we'll be able to use the entirety of the grant just because the nature um, of the grant itself is only for one salary and benefit mm -hmm. um, and then you can just kind of see where our general fund is we're about almost 92 percent utilization as of right now mm -hmm. that's a good place to be any, any questions? questions or anything awesome. all right thank you Okay, uh, accounts payable for April. You should have received yep. that. Is there any questions or comments on that? And you get them direct to, from Lori Morvan and then I repeat them in the packet. Terrific, thank you. Uh, board discussion and action items. Um, so we've, we've reorganized and, and have all of this discussion and action items. Thank you for getting us lined up in the right way. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Um, and, but we do not do these as, a, as a, any kind of slavery no. individually. So we'll start with the field trip approval for Cosmetology 2 and Skills USA. I just want to note that Cosmetology 2 trip already happened. Mm -hmm. I reached out to Alice because I received it after the uh, board meeting that we had last month. Um, and she said if the kids have earned it and I have no concerns that to go ahead and let them go and that you guys could approve it retroactively. So that's okay. what we did. So they four students did end up going to that. And then the other one is for Skills USA um, and that's for all of our gold winners to go to Atlanta in June um, and compete again Great. for a bigger prize. Do I have a motion to approve the field trip? I move that we approve the field trip, the one that already occurred and the one about to occur. <laughs> you have a second. I'll second it, Ryan. Okay, there we go. All right, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Field trips are approved. Policy C14, the first reading. 
So Guy reached out to me about this today and said, this looks like something we should have had. And as uh, Ms. Hopkins noted earlier, um, this is indeed something we should have had. I think we got rid of it because we thought um, in that first year when we were reviewing policies that this was a uh, an LEA policy and not one that we would need, and that's totally wrong. It is absolutely something we need, and this um, has been offered up to any family that has needed this in the last month, even though we don't have it as a, as a review. And so I wanted to make sure that we got it here for its first reading, and any anything that we need to update or edit from it, it has been reviewed by Heather Lynn. Um, and we've included here the procedures and the form also that are referenced. I'll make the motion we approve it for first reading and uh, you know thank the uh, the individual who presented tonight for you know her concerns about her family. Thank you. I have a second. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Okay, so uh, first reading has been approved. And uh, we'll, we'll have the second, second reading at the and next adoption at the next meeting. Second and adoption. Since there are no edits. For the May meeting. Okay. Okay, terrific. Um, the revenue anticipation note. So that's normally me. Uh, we usually request funding because our funding um, tends to dry up. We get our last payment in June. We don't get our next payment until September. So over the summer, we need some uh, money to kind of keep our flat cash flow positive. I do have um, three proposals that were submitted to me. I, did, it was, I would like some more time to try to negotiate these proposals before I present them to the board. Um, I'll leave it at that until I get more information. It's a good thing. Um, we just have a couple of different competing banks. And um, one bank we're already in business with, it's been really joy to work with. We already have those accounts there, but they're not quite meeting our needs. Yeah. So I'm asking for some updates. So I hope, hope <laughs> that I can come back with some other news before I. So would we do a table to motion? Yeah, I mean, a motion to take We don't have to take action, so you could. Yeah. Yeah. Look at it next month. Um, so, do we need to do anything to do that? Or we don't need a motion to wait till next month? You can. Yes, you should. Okay. Table it for now. Is and there anybody that would like to make that motion? I'll make a motion to table. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you in the June. next month. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we're not meeting next month. No. Right. Because we have our retreat. <laughs> yes, that's right. Program quality is not meeting next month because it is the board retreat. Okay. It starts at four. <laughs> the Perkins <laughs> four year plan. All right, so as you know, this year was a comprehensive local needs assessment year, and um, thank you again to the folks that were involved in that process. So Guy and Jana um, were on the committee. This is basically taking all of the questions that are in the Green Mountain uh, grant system in one document, and these are all the things that I have to fill in in the grant. So it's the report that I wanted to make sure that you all got a chance to see especially, um, I, I hope you have a chance to kind of skim through it and look at it, and then especially take a look at the very end, and literally all of these things have to be copy and pasted into the grant management system. Um, I'm looking for a page, just a moment. So pages 14 and 15, the multi-year plan. Is there anything in the multi-year plan that we haven't been talking about or that you don't feel like you can support based on what you already know about our center? And is there anything that you believe needs to be added or um, 
considered in our work over the next at least two years, potentially four years. Anybody? I think it's strong. I think it's strong. I mean, the process was great, and that we got to this place, and what needs to happen is excellent. It will make us stronger. What is priority area four? Strategy three is your design and fab recommendation already. Yep. There is no strategy four. Nope, but if you have one. Humanities, just tell me what that was a little bit. Which one? Humanities. So the embedded academics, STEM and humanities, are basically ways to support um, the academics across our program. So if you, and I was gonna show you this in a minute, but I can show it to you now. All of the core academics are embedded, embedded proficiencies in every single one of our programs. And not all of our teachers always feel really strong in their ability to assess students in this and or the instruction that they're given. And so what we tried in the past is a STEM coordinator and a literacy interventionist to support those areas. And what we've come to find out or feel is that if we had dual certified folks who had access to all of the courses in Canvas and for all of our programs, and could work with in collaboration with, so co-teaching with our teachers and or supporting them by providing some PD around specific pieces, that they would be able to support that. So if you look at what we have, every single program has these core academics in it. And so that humanities teacher would be English and social studies dual certified and would be able to support those across the programs and help strengthen what's already there. All of our standing schools have agreed to these proficiencies already. We just want to up the level of the expectations and make sure that students are getting the instruction they need. I mean, speaking to the concerns that were addressed earlier around not having what it takes um, to provide the supports for kids, we, we are not the LEA, so we do not provide services here. Right. We do provide accommodations. We often cannot modify because we have to do industry level. But what we can do is develop skills and strengthen a student's ability to access. Yep. And there are ways that we'd like to expand that down. And like one of the things that you'll see in this is a program expansion is foundations ninth grade, which we are probably going to have to open at a couple of sending schools instead of here. We don't have space here. But giving students some really strong skills where they can access a technical manual, for example, and, yep. and just give them a leg up and, and give them that extra coaching that might be needed for the process of applying, for the process of identifying what is it that I actually need to be able to do, how do, how do I need to control myself in a, a specific area to be safe, those sort of things. Um, so working on ways to strengthen that. And while I'm on here, Steph, you can capture it in the minutes for later, but we anticipate that welding would be the same because all of our programming have those embedded academics and that it would have an additional elective um, proficiency. So up to the setting school where they apply that um, for the welding. So it would be the same as all of our other programs with the exception of that other column where we noted that it would be one elective. We may later, after we've seen it in action, be able to say, Actually, that's a half PE because there's a lot of lifting of steel and moving things around, but right now we, we don't feel confident in saying that. Mm -hmm. So these are the uh, embedded proficiencies or credits that we believe are aligned for welding, too. Are we giving cosmetology PE after what they just said about standing yeah, on their I, feet for eight hours a day? I just closed that, but <laughs> I'll go back and look at it. <laughs> I'm not telling. <laughs> I just scrolled right by it. You didn't see? <laughs> All, right. All right. Great. Um. So it, with your approval of what we have in this Perkins application, I'm good to start putting that into the grant system and press submit. Yes. A motion? Yes. What? 
I move. Yes, we accept. We push the button. <laughs> Steph, I'm not sure how you're going to write that motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Cosmetology is just one. Yeah. Uh, do I have a second? No second. Okay. Stephanie, do you want me to say I move that we accept the Perkins grant and send it in as opposed to yes? <laughs> <laughs> and as opposed to push the button, so what I'm going to write is um, on a motion by Jana, seconded by Guy, the committee, you, not, you voted to approve the Perkins for your plan and to send it into the AOE. Perfect. <laughs> and the button was pushed once. I know, and, and push the buttons. <laughs> and, and push any the button. additional discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Yes. <laughs> 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 All right. And, and, and Lyman, with, with a big thanks for people who participated. I mean, it's extra time in, in people's lives. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was an impressive group of participants. <clears throat> really impressive. From industry and labor. Really great. That's fantastic. All right, um, so the design and fabrication status, uh, I'll just reiterate it for this section, would be to the recommendation from program quality would be to hold it open until August 1st, at which point we'll make the decision whether or not we're going to run the program for 24-25, and if not, we would employ the instructor um, for the 24-25 school year um, and an outreach position uh, developing the program for the 25-26 school year. Do I have a motion to approve that recommendation? No, I guess to approve that action. I'll move. Uh, I just did, Guy. You can second it. <laughs> Do I have a second? <laughs> Guy, you want to second it? You do, yeah. I will push the button on that. <laughs> <laughs> any, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, terrific. Welding program scope and sequence. So you'll remember there was a whole list from the Agency of Education of things that we needed to do to be able to get the program approved. And so the things that were still um, waiting as part of the application were that I talked to you all about busing from sending schools. So because the program is happening here, the busing would be the same for any of our other programs on campus in that students would come from their sending school in the morning, access the program starting at 8.30. At 12.30, they would be able to go get lunch and or leave if they drove themselves and then they're dismissed and back on the buses to their school so there's no additional transportation needed for this program we we do need to capture that in the minutes stephanie along with the proficiencies are updated in the document that i shared and then we had to provide the agency with the welding scope and sequence which is aligned also with the nccer welding uh, program so that would be the tier to industry credential. They are also gonna be able to get NCCER core. So all of our electrical, plumbing and heating, building trades and welding students all get that core. And I think that um, the design and fabrication students may also get that core in the future. So across all of those heavies, um, not automotive, they don't get it, but everyone else will have that core and then the, these guys will get the welding. So you can see that it's aligned to that and basically each of the units of study and an approximate timeline for that across this, this school year. And so what I need the board to do is to approve this scope and sequence and share that you're aware of the busing, same for all of our students and the embedded academics, which are also in line with the other programming. That worked out for us. Do I have a motion to approve the scope and sequence? So moved. <laughs> do I have a second? I'll second. Second, Jana. Second. Mm -hmm. uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Oh, all right. 
Guy? Yeah, just I, I just want to mention that, uh, you know, thank Jody for advocating for this program and going to bat. And for our board chair, uh, you know, Alice Farrell for, you know, also going to probably double bat in the button a couple of times. So, uh, you know, I think without those efforts, this would not have happened. So this is a, a good thing. Thank you. Thank you, Guy. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Welding is approved. Scope and sequence. Great. The superintendent evaluation. Which is a later Which is a later session. executive session. Okay. Moving on. Into executive session. Would somebody make the motion to go into an exec executive session using the language that's in the document here, please? The first one. The first one? I could do it. Thank you. I move to enter into executive session with all board members, Superintendent Emerson, Attorney Pietro Lynn, Aaron Carter, and Joe Moore. To serve rep for the purpose of discussing a grievance because premature public knowledge would clearly put the public body or person involved at a substantial disadvantage. I have a second. I second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Did we say aye? Aye. 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 We, just did. we did. All right. So we are going into executive session at 741. Go. We are out of executive session. Now we need to go back into executive session. So could I have a motion to go into executive session? I move that we go back into executive session. A second. Anybody? Yes, for what? Do we want to read yeah, it? Yeah, we got to read it. Yeah, can you read this? Oh, sorry. Oh, well, yeah. OK. Um, Oh, yeah. To enter into an executive session with all board members and Superintendent Emerson for the purpose of discussing the evaluation of the superintendent. Okay. Do you have the... There. If not. Did anybody second it? Second. Thank you. <laughs> Those in favor, aye. 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 All right, we are moving into executive session at 8.39. All right, do I have a, mo a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? <laughs> second. Alice says we second. Second, I'll second that. But, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Right. We'll see you June 10th at four o'clock.